Welcome to Kid Nation, one of the most insane reality TV shows ever made, where unaccompanied minors are driven to the middle of the desert to build a society from scratch, cook for themselves, clean for themselves, run their own economy, and drink bleach for themselves off camera. Yep, that actually happened. This show was so nuts, it leaves you wondering, is this the worst reality show ever made? Our host, the other property brother, tells us about Bonanza City, whose first inhabitants ran it into the ground, and it's up to small children to bring it back to life. So it begins, with 40 random kids on a bus ready to be physically and psychologically manipulated for the amusement of millions of people watching on network television. Uh-oh, this old kid has long hair and a hoodie. The show's already decided who the bully is. Stare straight ahead, stare straight ahead, stare despondently at a photo of you and your family while wearing transitions lenses. Damn it, the show's already decided who the target is too. This kid's screwed. City kids, country kids, rich, poor, and everything in between. The best way to successfully start a new society is to just immediately label every type of person. I'm not gonna be with my parents, there's no adults, and I think I'm gonna die out here because there's nothing. Uh-oh, this scared, exploited eight-year-old is already entertaining me. I'm terrible. Don't worry about it, here's some drone footage and dramatic music. Let's do this. Plaid Dead introduces the kids to their town council, four kids who get to arrive by helicopter instead of school bus and spray sand all over the townspeople. So the kids have to lug their sh the rest of the way to Bonanza City, not sure why they didn't just take them straight there, and also corral the animals that coincidentally just escaped from this random farm. And if you weren't paying attention before, here's your second warning. Don't mess with Greg. Meanwhile, Stranger Danger pulls the kid oligarchy aside and shows them the gold star worth $20,000 that they get to give to the top kid every few days. $20,000. No. No. Yes, now that these kids are incentivized to gain power through real money, nothing can go wrong. Luckily, this eight-year-old gets it. He's like, why am I doing this? I'm eight. I'm trying to have fun. Good question for everyone. Good question for your parents when you get home, too. So the town council immediately acts like they're hot sh and don't work. Almost like they were flown in on a helicopter and given a gold star worth 20k to give out to their favorite kid or something. I said, Mike, you're not working. And he said, no, I'm working really hard here, can't you see? But all he's doing, he's standing next to the wagon, like, come on guys, come on, come on. And really, he's just, you know, like one of those guys at the airport that's sort of pointing you in the right direction as if we can't follow the road. Well, looks like this 14-year-old gets it too. A lot of reality TV contestants are forced to live in less than desirable conditions, but only kids get to live in, well, prison conditions. I personally think it's gross. Oh look, it's footage of the creators of this show playing with fire. Before they can sleep in their prison, they gotta learn how to cook. So they spend all night burning themselves with fire stoves and boiling water and eventually figure out how to make mac and cheese. And it's gross. I'm happy with what we've got. Taylor, the youngest town council member, misses being at home and having a healthy meal and a place to sleep, which is like, I don't know, reasonable. And Jared's not sure if he's gonna be at the big meeting tonight because, you know, this whole thing blows. I think I'm tired and I'm stressed. That we weren't prepared for the scale of what we're doing. Kind of sounds like witness testimony, to be honest. Another solid piece of evidence that this truly is the worst reality show ever made. To make matters worse, none of these idiots time travel to the future to hear my warnings not to mess with Greg, and Mike decides he needs to stand up to him to prove himself as a town council leader. So that ends in tears. Could have just noticed the long hair and the beanie, but it's your funeral, dude. The show made you the target after all. Silver lining? Now Alex is off the hook. Time to lounge in the sun and let those glasses do their magic. Finally, Michael, long hair, no beanie, tells everyone to shut up and listen to the town council and do their jobs. So they all chant his name. At this point, the bar is pretty low. The town council reads the original Bonanza City Settlers Journal, which says they should split the town into four equal districts, which sounds a lot like segregation. Maybe they shouldn't take advice from people who lived in 1885, but I guess then it wouldn't be the worst reality show ever made. And it is. They split up the districts anyway, and then straight up lose Jimmy. He's crying in the corner somewhere, I guess because he's eight and stuck in the desert with a bunch of kids he's never met and cameras everywhere. Laurel bites off more than she can chew by telling Jimmy she's a viable substitute for his parents. Somehow, dividing the town into groups creates group loyalty, which leads to hostility in a matter of hours. Oh, and they also decide to reveal at this point that there's only one outhouse for all 40 kids. I hope that I don't have to take a poo because I am not ever using that thing. Fun. This town needs some help, so large adult dad comes and explains that he's gonna make things more organized by creating hierarchical power through monetary incentive independence. This is really cool! Hey, let's all play a game to decide who gets what. It's like that old show Wild and Crazy Kids, but with an all-child dystopian hellscape as the stakes. So they decide who's rich and who's poor, and also unlock a reward for the town. They get to choose between seven more outhouses... Or a TV! 
I wonder what the choice would have been if they were properly outfitted with a reasonable amount of toilets for 40 kids from the get-go. I can't think of better proof of an abusive environment than a bunch of children cheering for outhouses instead of a TV. But somehow even semi-simulated child abuse won't get me to stop watching the worst reality show ever made. All this has Sophia thinking, I feel like a lot of, sometimes I'm just surrounded by a whole lot of dumb people. Uh-oh, she might know too much already. Fast forward to the next morning, and Sophia is now fully woke. I'm a laborer now. This morning I got up at 6, I scrubbed toilets, I did laundry, and I hauled a big barrel of water, and I just got 10 cents, and I can't afford a game of jacks. Wow, it did not take long for one of these kids to question capitalism. Maybe this is the best reality show ever made. Maybe I'm just the worst. Maybe we can both be the worst. They all have a town hall where they voice concerns about the town council and no one doing the dishes and Big Brother asks if anyone wants to go home, which is an irreversible decision, and they have to decide right now in front of everyone before it's revealed that they could win 20k if they stay. So, fuck that guy. Anyway, Jimmy decides to go home, because again, he's eight and this place objectively sucks. Run, Jimmy, run! Now that Jimmy can't get anything out of his terrible experience, adult man tells the kids who played ball all about the gold star, and the council gives it to Sophia. She gets the key to the only building in Bonanza City with a phone, and is allowed to talk to her parents once. This is her chance to tell them she just won 20 grand and is also being kidnapped and lightly tortured by a TV show. Sophia tells her mom she won 20 grand, which pulls our heartstrings enough to keep watching for the rest of the entire season because adults are easily manipulated too. Her mom doesn't seem to wonder if maybe the people in the town saw that Sophia knew too much and paid her off to avoid a revolution, but I do. Wake up, sheeple. Anyway, now that everyone is properly divided against each other in a social experiment driven by money manipulated by a giant media corporation for the amusement of assholes like me, everyone feels like they can work together and build a great society. Cheers! Don't worry, that was just the first episode. Every episode of this series drove me more insane than the last, and hopefully it will ruin your life too. That's what makes it the best worst reality show ever made. I love you and we're in this together.